Hello, hello, everybody. Um, so, yeah, welcome to another stay at home and meditate session with Trigger Meditation Community. I'm uh, I'm Franca, and I'm joining you again from Victoria, Canada, where it's beautiful and sunny today. And I'm happy to be offering a guided meditation, probably about 20 minutes long. And um, yeah, I can see, okay, we've got mainly U United States people. Okay, East Coast is well represented and Portugal. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Good to see you guys. And um, so, yeah, it's always nice to see where, where people are coming and calling in from. Okay. <laughs> Great, New York. <laughs> okay, so what are we doing today? Well, we're going to talk uh, a little bit about what Rinpoche talked about, what he taught us on Sunday. I thought it was a super inspirational talk. Um, it's called Keep Calm When Your Mind is Wild. Yes, my mind is wild sometimes. And I, you know that the sentence in his talk that really stayed with me was the one about, you know, lasting happiness comes from within. And um, so we know, you know, it's not about chasing after externals. We know it's, it's not about changing our circumstances, uh, about the next relationship, coffee, hiking, or whatever adventure. So we know that. Um, and of course, I've spent most of my life in a mad search for happiness in, in that way, looking outside of myself. And so, yeah, so he mentioned, I was thinking about this sentence, right? True happiness comes from within. And I've, I know I encountered that statement before I, long ago, like before I started meditating. And I, I remember thinking, yeah, that's probably true. Sure, it makes sense. I can agree with it. But I, I didn't think about it. Um, in fact, it sort of remained like a, like, you know, like a flat statement. Like it was two-dimensional because, um I actually had no idea that there was such a thing as lasting happiness and that we could actually find it. And that's what Minga Rinpoche, you know, that's what he started off talking with. He said, we actually don't know most people. No, we do. We're lucky. We, but many people don't know there's such a thing that lasting happiness is possible. And, and he said, secondly, people don't know how to connect to it. And so, you know, he told us that it's all about recognizing our innate qualities. And it's like, oh, yeah. So that's, that's what's meant with the happiness is found within. The within are those innate qualities. So here, you know, the love, compassion, wisdom, capabilities. That's the, that's the part we just don't see. That's the, that's the part that's obscure because of the I don't know, you know, that I didn't know it was there. That's what he would call the ignorance. So, so it's just a little buried, is what I'm, is what I'm realizing. And and so then suddenly this statement, happiness is found within. You know, it's no longer two dimensional. It's just suddenly come come alive. It's it's become three D. It's like I was thinking. It's like you know how people used to think the world is flat. Well, <laughs> now it's a sphere. And and so it's like oh, so so this idea happiness is within is goes from 2D to 3D, and um, it's, a, it's a discovery that Rinpoche is showing us is possible, and, and, and that, in fact, um, we can change um, by, you know, that, that actually physically our brain even changes that. If we think we're a shy person, an angry person, a depressed person, that we, we're not stuck in those places. All, all that can, can be changed, and that's, that's just a really hopeful message and so how how do we then connect with our innate qualities how do we work with our neural pathways well it's all about this awareness and um and the byproduct of touching into our innate qualities that's where the the happiness part arises so so our job again is to work with awareness and so that's what we're going to do in our meditation today again and so I'd, I'd like to invite you um, to find a comfortable body posture where your spine is upright and you have a sense of 
relaxation, being at ease. And then just checking in with yourself. You know, you've all come from just doing something. Can we leave that behind? And can we arrive here fully? And so let's use the breath to help us with that, just releasing any tensions in the body and the mind. Just breathing out. <sighs> and letting any tension go. And then let's just begin by touching into uh, feelings of appreciation, just very briefly. What, what are you grateful for at this very moment? So I, I know I'm grateful for my siblings who are here in Victoria, um, assisting with my aging mother. What are you grateful for? You're welcome to enter it into the, into the chat box if you'd like. But when we, when we think of appreciation, you know, there's this natural warmth that, that arises. And it's, um, it's with this natural warmth that I'd like us to consider our motivation for our practice today. What is it that you can touch into for this practice? And then let's extend that to, uh, to be of benefit to others. Not just for ourselves, but hoping that all others may share in any positive benefits and let those ripple out into the world. And now I'm going to have a peek at the chat box again, just looking at, yeah, the things that we're appreciating. Yeah, nice. Bird songs, my son is alive, appreciating that you're alive, yeah, yeah. Okay, so then if you'd like, you can keep your eyes open or closed, whatever you prefer, and just feeling uh, whether your spine is straight or does it need a slight adjustment. feeling the chair or the cushion beneath you. And just letting your body relax. And let's just go starting at the top of our head. Let's just Relax the muscles in our forehead and face. Our ear, our cheeks. Our jaw. Softening our shoulders. Mm. 
our upper back. Our arms. Our chest and torso. And remembering the back as well, moving awareness down the back. And then just inviting awareness down our legs all the way to our feet. And just noticing any sensations that are there. Are they pleasant? Are they unpleasant? Maybe there's no feeling at all. Here we're simply noticing the sensation. This is the, uh, the object-based meditation that Rinpoche was talking about. It's where we rest our awareness on the sensations in the body. So let's spend another minute or two here just noticing the sensations in our body. And if we get distracted, just coming back to the sensations. And then expanding your awareness beyond the body to your surroundings. And just resting your attention on whatever sounds are arising around you. And just allowing your awareness to become more vast, more open. So now we're using sound as a support for awareness.
Just let the sounds come to you. We don't need to go out towards the sound. But we can bring a almost childlike, natural, open curiosity, but a very light touch to the sound. And we'll just spend a minute or two here. Again, we might drift off into thoughts and emotions. Just come back to hearing sounds. Just know you're hearing the sound. And just returning to the sound when lost. Now we can expand our awareness even further beyond our immediate surroundings. So so just feeling the space in front of you, behind you, above you, all around you. And just be aware of that space. So here we're letting go of sound and we're resting in the space that the sound arises in. So here what's important is not the object, but it's the awareness, it's the space within which everything occurs. And again, thoughts, emotions, they're like 
Clouds in the sky, they come and they go. They arise and they dissolve into space. But we're staying with space. We're staying with this boundless space that's open in all directions. And then if, you're, if your eyes are closed, I invite you to, um, to open your eyes and simply be present. So here we're, we're just dropping meditation. We don't need to meditate. We're just letting the mind and the body rest naturally. So we're, we're simply aware of what arises in the present moment. But we're not, we're not meditating, but we're not distracted. We're just letting everything be as it is. We're, we're being here and not getting lost. There is nothing that needs to be different. There's nothing my mind is trying to achieve. Thoughts may come and go, that's fine. That's what mine does. But we're just staying right here, not getting lost. This is the non-meditation, not getting lost part. is just resting our mind.
Getting lost and coming back, that's the practice. Coming back. And then letting go of that, letting go of that non-meditation, (laughs) non-distraction. And just feeling, um, let's, let's touch into just appreciating ourselves for practicing today. Appreciating the others who joined us. And then let's, um, let's dedicate the practice in whatever way, let's uh, in our heart find a way to wish others, to wish that any benefits that we've gained that others may also benefit from, from this in some way. So, so yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody. That was um, that was really nice, really helpful for me too. And uh, I enjoy sitting here with you, from people from all parts of the world. And uh, so, let me just tell you a little bit about what's coming up um, next Sunday. We have Turgor instructor Miocean Kelly. She's going to give a talk on how to relax about being tense. Sounds great. And we have other um, trigger facilitators. One of them you know well, probably, George. He'll be here um, next Tuesday. And uh, so, yeah, Tuesdays and Fridays, these sessions will continue, and they'll go until July 10th. And then, of course, we've got the the big um, online retreats coming up with Mingyu Rinpoche. So I hope some of you will have a chance to join that. So it's been wonderful being here, and I wish you a wonderful rest of the week. See you, everybody.